What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Again, I am Kyle with Limitless Power Sports and Repair. What we have going on here, this is part two of this 2005 Yamaha uh, R6. Uh, what we're gonna do here behind me, we're gonna go ahead and go through and check out uh, the valves in this thing. The valve clearances in here are due at uh, 26,600 miles, I believe. We're right around 18.7, but uh, they said they are, they're on the rev limiter quite a bit. They like riding wheelies and doing a bunch of different stuff like that. So we're gonna go ahead and run through this thing. <clears throat> he also had an oil leak. Um, we're gonna go ahead, I can already tell the air box is not on tight. There is a vent tube that is not connected where it should be. Uh, so we're gonna go through and make sure all that's right. Check the valve clearances, put a new valve cover gasket on here along with grommets, torque all that down properly. Uh, so I'm gonna take you guys through how that works and uh, we'll talk about the valve clearance is supposed to be. And uh, you always do this uh, check when the engine is completely cold, so nothing metal is swollen or because it expands when it gets hot. So you make sure everything's cold. Uh, that way you can have the proper valve clearances. All right, so the first thing we did, you know, you had to take the seat off, pull the gas tank, the air box, uh, all that. We're also gonna do a throttle body sink on this. Um, you wanna make sure before you do a throttle body sink, you gotta make sure your valve clearances are correct. So everything's pulling the proper vacuum when you do a throttle body sink on this one. So the clearance on this thing, guys, the intakes are gonna be uh, 13.13 uh, through 0 0.20 millimeters or 5,000 through 8 thousandths. Uh, and then the exhaust is gonna be 0.23 millimeters through 0 0.30 millimeters, or which I like to use the thousandths, which is uh, 9 thousandths through 12 thousandths. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and jump into this thing, take it apart and get those valves checked. All right guys, so we got the gas tank off here. Um, I noticed that the return line didn't have a clamp on it. Uh, as you can see here, there is a vent tube not connected. I have to see what that one goes to. Also ran across, that's the air box, not connected very well at all. Um, I can see there's oil all over the place from there. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, take the uh, tubes loose here. 10 millimeter bolt there, disconnect the crankcase vent and go ahead and take off the air box. All right, guys, you can see here, none of these were tight, uh, except for this one. Uh, and then it had, of course, this was folded over, getting pinched. So it's gonna cause a runnability issue also. Uh, it's gonna pull way too much air. Gonna cause problems with the carburetors, vacuum, all that stuff. So gotta make sure that these are loosened and they're not touching and bent over like this. Um, it, it can cause major problems. See that right there. <coughs> All right, so the next thing, guys, we're gonna do, we gotta come in here, check all this out. And this one here, this is this runs the pair valve, the one that was loose over here. Um, that should have been back up over here. There's your air vent, vent there. And then the other one will go to the, over here to the pair valve. So that's gotta be connected also. This Basically what this one does, these two here on the outside do, that's for the atmosphere vent for the CV slides and your carburetors. Um, this guy's a little dirty also. If you want to look in here, you can see it was sucking sucking air. So you, all these, all, everything down here is just dirty going into the venturis of the carburetors. So that's just sucking all that dirt right down in there. So now next we got to do, we got to take, go ahead and take the carburetors out, flip them to the side. And then we will uh, 
uh, I shouldn't say carburetors, throttle bodies out, flip them to the side, and uh, get over here to the valve cover. Unit heading up to the code three, Chase. Suspect was last reported southbound on Highway 99. Yeah, All right guys, so it took me forever to get the valve cover off. Uh, had a lot of hoses that I removed for the, uh, for the choke and stuff. You can see how that operates. The hotter it gets, the plunger pushes in on this guy and opens and closes for the choke. Uh, had to cap some of those off, so we got that done. You can see the valve train up here, the cams. You can see the buckets underneath those, cam lobes facing us on cylinder number two. And then over here on the side, where the crank trigger's at, we'll turn this to get cil cylinder number one, these lobes, they're already facing up, which is good. So we can take a measurement on that, but I will slowly crank this over and we'll go through each one of these on the exhaust and intake. I like to start on the intake first, go across the intake, check each one of those, and then spin it over, check all the exhaust. All right guys, so if you can look here, I'm gonna spin this cam backwards real quick so you guys can get a look at the the cam lobes on cylinder one here. You see the lobes right there? What we want that to do, we want that to face as far away as we can from the buckets that are underneath it. So what we'll do, we'll rotate this until those lobes are pretty much vertical off the buckets down underneath there. Then we'll take our feeler gauges, go in there, get our measurement and write that down. All right, guys, you can see here, I went through and measured all the valves. All the valves are within spec. Uh, intakes are 5,000, 6,000, some are 7,000, which is great. Um, exhaust is 9,000, I have a couple 10,000, which is perfect. Uh, I prefer more in the middle, but that is within spec. But I will show you guys how this is done. If you look over here, let me go ahead and roll over uh, cylinder number three right here for you on the exhaust side. So if you look, the cam lobes are facing up. Grab your feeler gauge, you can see it's a 9 thousandths, so and we'll slide it in there. Slides in there nice and easy, we'll try them both. Slides in there nice and easy on both. So we'll grab a 10 thousandths now, and that slides in there. Doesn't fit in there, so you know that one's 9 thousandths. We'll grab an 11 thousandths now, and then we'll try this again. Does not fit. So we know that's a 10 thousandths clearance and a 9 thousandths clearance, and both of those fall in spec. It's really simple, you just rotate the motor over, run through all that, on each one of the valve, uh, each one of the buckets on the intake and exhaust side, it's really simple. Um, adjusting them if they're out of spec is a little bit different story. Taking measurements, seeing what shim there is, and knowing what shim to put in there, and remeasuring, making sure everything's back in time when you put it back together. That's the more difficult thing, <laughs> but it's very simple to. Uh, man, I don't know why this thing's cockeyed. 
to do. Valve clearances, just a pain in the butt to get there. And I'm just rotating it over here on the crank sensor side, crank trigger side to get to where I need to be. So I have a new uh, valve cover gasket and grommets on order for him. That should be here in the next day or two, along with a rectifier, uh, which was in the previous video. So we'll knock that out and this out and uh, he should be one happy camper. Something else I wanted to show you guys. Um, when I was taking the spark plugs out, I noticed he has uh, iridiums in here. Uh, honestly, the iridiums aren't gonna do you guys much good. Uh, you're just kind of wasting your money. This one actually calls for a NGK CR10 EK. Um, here's the issue with this though. Cylinder one, two, and three were all iridiums. Cylinder four was a CR10 EK. Um, that's not good. You guys gotta make sure you run all the same plugs in there. They, they fire at different temperatures. Those are all CR9 EIX, I think is what it was. Yeah, CR9 EIX for the iridiums. Uh, if it doesn't call for iridiums, guys, don't waste your money doing it. It's not gonna help you out at all. So make sure you guys, when we do these, we make sure we have all the same plugs. I'm gonna run just your stock CR10 EX, EKs in them. CR10 EK NGKs. We're not running race fuel in this thing. We're not doing cam timing. We're not, you know, it, it doesn't call for iridiums. Uh, honestly, sometimes iridium plugs can cause, uh, if they're on the dyno, a little glitch up on the, on the screen. It's kind of weird how they kind of cause a uh, radio interference like that. Uh, I know some people haven't seen it. Some people have, I know I have on the dyno. Um, but again, guys, let's make sure we all run the exact same plugs. So I'm gonna put new plugs in this thing. They're all gonna be the CR10 EKs that it calls for. Yeah.